Welcome fellow folders to the next episode of how to get better at origami and today's video we're going to be looking at figuring out shaping that is basically the first video on this series I'm not sure if I've done one on this before but anyway we're going to go with it and if you don't know this is the base for Ganyu's dragon on his right shoulder which is on the screen, you can see that. Now, figuring out shaping, this mostly applies to crease patterns for this video. Obviously we have a crease pattern, because when you think about it, a diagram shows you how to pre-crease, how to collapse, and nine out of 10 times it will show you rough shaping, like add curves, shape here, etc. Whereas crease pattern, you don't really have, you've got instructions on how to pre-crease, and then no instructions on how to collapse, and then when you collapse the crease pattern, you have this random array of layers and flaps, etc. And then there's no instructions on how to shape. Now we're going to be looking at that subject, how to go from this weird base, which you can see on the screen of Gan Yu, to the finished model. It's a fun process, it can be challenging, it's probably the best part for me because I love experimenting, I love trying to figure out how to do it and what to shape etc. So this is the base for the head of the dragon. It doesn't look anything like a dragon. That's the first thing I noticed when I collapsed it. It doesn't look anything like a dragon. How am I supposed to shape this to look like one? There's no instruction. There's only pictures of a few other people's folds. Um, that have made it, they don't really help as well. So it's all about yourself trying to figure it out. So I'm hopefully going to go through the process that I did. Um, hopefully I can remember how to do it. And it was, a, it was about two months ago. But we'll figure it out. So the first thing I noticed is, uh, I'll have the designers fold on screen. And I think this is the only picture of the designer's dragon um, from my friend Legendary who managed to find it. So I'll try and keep it on the screen most of the time. Maybe I'll stay over here or I'll just have it up small. But anyway, first thing I noticed was the eyes. And there's only one flap which is right here. And it must be able to use the eye. So I had a guess that the eye would be taken from like the corner here so I was comfortable with that and how to do that but I couldn't actually make the eye because we have this uh, plate overlapping another one so it's basically connected so I had to unconnect this so basically you're just pulling out the paper like that and then you're just making the valley fold and then you can either fold it up or fold it down and then do that. So when I did that, I realized I have unlocked this edge. I can then do whatever I want to do to, to this part to try and make it look like an eye. Um, I was gonna guess that was right. And the thing is with crease patterns, there's no knowing if what you have done is correct or not. So you, sometimes you just need to go if you've got, and if it looks right and it feels right, then it's better than nothing. So I did the same for the other side, and that was that. We have both edges unlocked, and we can basically perform uh, pleats or crimps here, whatever way you want to do an eye. And it's fully usable now, whereas it was completely locked, we couldn't do anything. Now. What I also noticed was uh, I had an idea this would be the top part of the head because I've got the eye here and here. This would be the top part of the head, the eye, the eye, and then the bottom. As you can see on the designer's fold, yeah, I'll make sure to have the picture through the entire video so I don't need to scroll through and find the parts where I say include it here. So if you notice on the designer's fold, he has the eyes, the bottom part, and then he, ha he doesn't really have the top part of the head because that's the way the designer uh, shaped his. 
but I wanted to try and have a fully round, like we'll look at it like this, try and have a possible round um, face or head. But what he probably did was make like valley folds here once he unlocked these edges because that's what it looks like to me. He's unlocked these and then sort of valley folded to do whatever he wanted to do. Now, before I um, started to shape this, I did not test fold because I was very comfortable in what to do and what made it uh, comfortable for me was a model I did a while ago had a part like this where you collapse it, you get near enough the same results and then you do the exact same process to uh, that model to this model to get the same sort of results. Uh, and that is Kota's Japanese Spiny Lobster because in the long parts, just at the start of the long parts, uh, like right here, we have all these little spikes and to shape those you have the same base and then you just unlock all the layers as we did here and then you just hide the excess layer you can pleat it, swivel it, uh, do whatever you can to make it look like spikes of some sort and then shape it so I was comfortable with that so I'm just going to pleat the eye just to make it easier to make out what I'm doing or make out the final thing so I'm basically going to make now this is where you just you just judge it so I'll make like a mountain fold here and then a valley fold here so this is what I did and then it was deciding how far should I go from here to the centre etc so it's just as you're judging a lot by eye and by the way, my nails are never this yellow. They are always pristine white. I don't know why they're this yellow. Just in case anyone decides to point that out and make fun of me for having yellow nails. They're never this bad, trust me. So, like that. So we can instantly recognize the eyes more. And then the top of the head and then the bottom. So that's good. Um, next step, what I did was first of all we have to unlock all of these layers. Uh, I think I'll start with the left hand side. So again, uh, I'll leave this part to last. I'm going to unfold the side and then we're just going to again pull out the layers. Because technically we have this corner as like one spike, the one underneath as another spike, another one, another one, another one, another one. So we have two here, two here, two here, six, potentially one here, seven, eight, underneath nine, ten, eleven, twelve maybe, eleven at the most. So we need to unlock or unloosen or yeah probably unlock. All of these parts, so like, same again, we're just going to pull out, hopefully I don't rip this, like, let me open it more so I don't rip it. So I'll do one at a time. Like that. So we've unlocked it and then we're just going to try and collapse it back together like that. So that's what I did. And then we're just going to do this one as well. Now, because we're shaping, it may not necessarily lie flat or be super neat, but you just do what you can to try and make it work. Like that, see this one doesn't, I probably have taken that too much, I'll put up another wee bit. So it's like halfway. So something like that. And it'll only go, it'll sink up halfway this extra line that we pulled out. 
and then we'll just slot it back underneath and then flatten it. So we've unloosened this one and the one underneath. I'm going to do the exact same for this one here. Now this is the way um, I did it. Um, there's probably other ways you could do it. It's just this is the way I thought of when trying to figure out what to do to try and make them. Wait, what happened here? Oh, there we go. Okay, that's fine. So we've done these ones. That's probably neater. Like that. So like that, yeah. So they'll go up halfway. And then they'll form around like that. And then we're just going to do the exact same for this one. Because I wanted to try and unloosen every part as much as possible to make it um, as foldable or as, as shapeable that I could have it. So I could have um, all the possibilities if I wanted to shape. I could potentially do them if I unlocked all these edges. So I've done, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Probably wouldn't use these ones underneath, maybe. Uh, I can't really tell because I didn't print off enough of the bottom. But we'll leave it at that for now. And then we're just going to start off, uh, start on the right side. So I'm going to pull apart this one. And then just tuck it in like that. Now the right side um, has less because that's, I believe it's at the edge of the paper where the right hand side has more layers. So you uh, for my fold, I had more spikes on the left hand side than the right. I believe it was four on the right, two on the top, and then six on the left. So that's what I got in mind, or around about that. And then we'll just do this last one. Like that. There. Now just make these eyes again a little bit more. So there we go, we have all the edges loosened up. Um, it makes it easier when you have the eyes in place because it starts to come together. Now the next step that I was trying to figure out was how to make these spikes. And again from doing Kota's uh, lobster, I've, you, I realised that you could do swivel folds like this, like from point to point, to start to somewhat thin them down. So that is basically what I did. But first of all, I, let me see if I could, because I had a spike in the center, right here, one uh, above this. So I just, basically lined up this part with that part. And then... did this. So like that. And then you're just going to open it and then sort of Squash it. Like that. Because if you notice on uh, the head of mine, I have this spike and then this one as well. So that's how I did mine. And then because you, because this point here wasn't in the center, 
Now that it is in the centre, we have created sort of excess paper. It's not going to lie flat, it lies flat like this. But when you do that, it doesn't lie flat. So, it gives us more excess paper to work with to try and make these spikes. Now, I can't remember if I kept it up top. Yeah, this is definitely a point as well. Let me just... I might tuck that up. Yeah, I'll do something like that. I'll just unlock this part as well. So just like that. Now we basically have the base, or a better base, of the dragon head. Um, what I did was now just start to make swivel folds. And you could do something like this. So just by doing um, those two swivel folds, we have got one, two, three spikes already. I can't, I can't remember if I did one here or not. I'm pretty sure I did, because I'm sure I had four here. So we'll just do one. I'm sure this was coming up, maybe. Maybe it wasn't. I'll leave that one for now. And then this one as well. It's just a matter of playing with the paper, trying to make it look like what you want it to be, which is, for my case, sort of spikes slash horns, etc. So we have this. We have one here, two, three, four. Extra paper. I can't remember because I don't have the rest of the paper coming down, I can't remember what I was working with. And then on this side, because we have lots more, it's a matter of playing about with everything. And then you're basically just going to be doing this for all of them. Well, what I did. Because we want to try and thin down as much as possible. Sort of like that. And again, there is no correct way or wrong way. It's just doing what you feel like doing. exactly what I did for the top part. Yeah, I'll just put this one in place as well. done these ones they're just completely undone and we'll just try to find all the edges that we can work with to potentially thin down all the parts and we even have another layer in here which we could pull out but I'll leave it like that for now I'll see how we go with this
I'll leave it one like that. Right. Can't really tuck the layer this inside. But anyway, once we do that, we basically have a much better ver uh, version of what we had before. We have, again, the eyes, the top of the head, the bottom of the head, and we have the spikes. So in this case, we have on the left hand side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a possible eight, an eighth one right here, which I haven't unlocked. And on the right hand side, we have one, two, three, four, we have four. And then on the top, we have one and two. So we have a lot of spikes or horns, whatever you want to call them, um, already near enough in place. So now what I did was, once I was comfortable with having everything in place, everything swiveled, all the layers done correctly, then it's just a matter of gluing. So I would glue, pardon me, I would just add glue, a touch of glue in here, Elmer's Clear Glue, and in here as well. And then also underneath and side, just a bit in here. So glue three of those parts, peg it, glue here, glue there. Pardon me, underneath, glue again. And the same for every single one. All over on both sides. Then what I did was just a matter of gently fold them in half. Just fold them in half. Like that. Then I'd push all the excess layers inside. Then for um, a last little touch, I loved them like this, but I think I just did that at the very tip of the spike just to give it a nice little curve. Um, again, as soon as, as, soon as, as soon as I done that for the first one, I absolutely loved it. And then I did that for the rest of them. Um, all on the left hand side, all on the right hand side. Not for the top part here and here. Yeah, for this one or this one, not those two. But the same for these ones. So you would just curve. And then tweezers. You probably don't even need tweezers, but again, it depends on the size you used. Like that. So that's what I did. Um, when I did that, I was super happy. Next, what I did was figuring out. Um, this is probably the easiest part: is puffing out the head. Again, if you look at it from this way. The head is sunken in, it's a concave. I wanted it to be out and nice and round, so I had to flip it over. Now I did this after all this was shaped, not during or before it. Because if you do it before it and then you need to work all of this, there's a really high chance that you'll press here. You no, know, you'll have it nice first, and then you'll start shaping this and press and curving it, and before you know it, you've You've pushed it, you've shifted the cotton wool, it's moved, it's sunk, it doesn't look symmetrical. So it's best, if you can, leave this part, or leave these types of parts till the last minute. Because once you put it in place, that's it. You don't want to touch it again. That's exactly how it's going to look. If I start playing about with it and shaping this and that, it could affect the final result of uh, this part. So last minute would be to fill up and then you need to try and access the inside and this is quite tricky because it's quite like a maze type so you'd see as soon as, soon as I push out that looks so much better it's got that nice natural roundness now the thing is um, this itself won't hold that shape it, it, it would hold it if you never touched it again if I just go oops a gentle press it's sunk back in. So you use cotton wool. 
much. I don't have any prepared. Let me just grab some. Lock this behind me. So cotton wool is your best friend and doing these types of techniques for puffing out. So what a good thing to do is access the pocket, which is right here. Make sure you know how to get into it because when you have um, the full base, it's different from a test fold because in a test fold you will have paper coming down the way, up the way from all sides. For this case, we don't. Um, it's only a part of the crease pattern that I printed off so it's harder to work with full, crease part, uh, full sheets uh, for bases so you would just break a bit off and then just remember how to get into the pocket that's important which is this gap right there that one right there it's like performance surgery you can't go through the wrong ones in case you damage something. So what I do is just memorize where it is, put the cotton wool over, and then gently, if I need to, I can put it out of the way, and then push it inside the pocket. Like that. Turn this a wee bit. So there. So we are inside the pocket and now this tool comes in super handy because I'm trying to adjust it. I have put in an X amount, X amount first and then I'm looking to see does it need some on the sides. I'm going to try and like break it up with the tool. I'm going to push it towards my thumb and then I'm going to push it down towards between the eyes then over to the left. And then I go, okay, I think it looks perfect here, but it's sunk a little bit here, so I'm going to need some more. I'll take some more. I'll place it over the pocket. I'll memorize where it is it needs to go, so it's the top left. And then I'll put it in the pocket. And then instantly, top left. Because I'm putting this part where it should go. I don't want it to mix up or forget and then you would just constantly readjust to try and get uh, your desired result and for me that was having the head perfectly round smooth as much as possible so that was my goal and once I did that for the top I wanted the bottom as well because if you have a perfect top um, why not a bottom as well? So again, exact same. Now the bottom is slightly harder to access because we have this, this valley fold right here. We need to try and access it a better way. Oh yes, right here. And then same again, cotton wool. And it's not, uh, the bottom part isn't this easy to access because we don't have any extra paper floating about. And then it's the exact same process to do the bottom, but I'm not going to go through all of that. It's just a matter of playing about with it, adding more. Uh, you don't generally want, want to take away because depending on the paper, most likely it, it won't be this size. This is massive compared to mine. Um, yeah, it's, it'll be harder to, to take away because if you've got that all locked in place, nice and neat, and it's oh, it's too much. The heads, the heads pushed out way too much. I need to take some out. I mean, it's your tweezers, depending on the size of paper you use, probably won't even be able to access uh, the entrance to the, the top of the head. So it'll be hard to, to take some out. So it's always best to try and just add small amounts at a time because all these small amounts will accumulate to one larger amount and if you have evenly placed it around the head then you should be good. Now 
this is the bottom, like the front of the mouth. Uh, what I did was just add some teeth. I'll take this cotton milk out, just just on the bottom. And then, basically, what I did was the same for the eyes, uh, right at the edges, right here, was just somewhat mountain fold. Make like a mountain fold here, and then a valley fold. I should have uh, done this part first before the cotton wool. I do apologise. So we're just going to make a mountain fold. Maybe that's a bit too much. I don't want it to go all the way down to the bottom. I want to have it like a nice sort of chiselled look. And then we're just going to valley fold it back up. like that. So that's basically the, the right tooth, if we hold it like that, that would be the tooth for the right hand side. And then the same again. Now once you do it on one side, uh, try and keep it symmetrical because, um, let me see, yeah the mouth ends here, whereas I just did it on the right side, but it ends all the way up here. So it's too high up on the right hand side, so I need to lower it a little bit. Yeah, that looks better. And the same again, we're just going to fold up. Now it depends on how much you made the mountain fold and how much you made the valley fold depends, uh, will determine how big the tooth you get. So I'm happy with that. And then I just did swivel folds, which is, I don't have anything easier to show, but let me just try and zoom in. Basically brought this edge here up to this edge. So I wanted to try and make the tooth quite pointy and in a way, so like that. Let's not focus. Why are you not focused? There we go. And then the same with the bottom. Although it's quite tricky, you might not get it flat or just as much. So doing that, we have a pointed tooth. Again, you could do that or just leave it like that. Again, from far off it looks better like this compared to this. So yeah, we'll probably just leave it like that, but that's what you would do if you wanted uh, a spiky tooth. And then it's just a matter of, after you've done that, you would just like add gentle mountain folds here and here. So on both sides, just to try and get it nice and nice and round. And then the nose, what I did was, we have whatever general shape we have here, just to try and attempt to make a nostril of some sort, was just take your tweezers and pinch the center, like that, and then you basically bring it 90 degrees around, like that, which creates those little two nostrils, and then a little spiky, could be another tooth, um, you could do that, and then we have basically all the details, what we would then do is, what I did, was fill up um, this part with cotton wool, so let's put that back in, see if it makes any difference. That's probably too much actually. Now you just add small amounts here and there. Try and get it underneath this part if possible. 
something like that. So that looks better already. Now, when you add the cotton wool after the details, that can potentially push out the details because you're adding in more volume. Uh, the details are for when the paper was flat, so it may get pushed out. So you then need to readjust and basically go from there. And then um, what I also did was make a valley fold right here as well. Because once I had enough cotton wool, that would allow me to make a valley fold to make the top of the head. And then once I was happy with everything, pardon me, I would just go back, readjust everything. Um, if I needed more angles, I would do that. And then do it until I was happy. And then once I was happy, that was it. Don't touch it anymore. I'm happy with it. Um, I don't want to try and risk losing details by trying to add too much or uh, overdo it. Uh, maybe ruin the details, whatever. Um, yeah, that was basically the process um, that I did to make the Ganyu dragon head. Um, and that's just one part of the crease pattern. There are multiple parts of the crease pattern uh, for the base of the model that re require this type of thinking to get um, results that you want creative results and um, try to make it look like the designers trying to add your own touches it's all about playing with the base and um, don't be scared of it test folding really does help I've done many videos on test folding on uh, talked about it as well test folding you can practice any part of a crease pattern as multiple times as you want you can figure out how to do uh, collapsing shaping and uh, once you figure that out you can do it multiple times to make sure you know how to do it and then you can do it first go on your actual sheet of paper so you don't uh, potentially ruin the paper um, and get it perfect first try so test folding is super important and um, if you want to get if you want to make it neater in the end I'll definitely recommend it for any parts you're unsure of um, yeah I think I've covered everything in the video that is basically Let's just hide that part. That's basically what we have. Again, gluing it will make it much more neater and then just the general roundness and then the formation of the eyes will be a lot better. And I want you to touch it up with glue or fine tweezer work. These come in super handy. Folder's best tools right here for shaping. And that is basically the video. Hopefully you learned a thing or two from it and thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.